Well, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with you with a look at our ag commodity trade. And it's always my pleasure this time of the week to check in with Ben Hushin. He is from The Mill in Whitehall, Maryland. He joins us right now, and it's always a, a, a joy to find out what's going on in the Mid-Atlantic region for agriculture. And uh, Ben, this time around, for this particular week, I wanted to visit with you a little bit about how the conditions have been and how's your corn crop coming along. Good morning, Marlon. It continues to be a uh, below average. I mean, we're not getting any heat hardly at all. We're getting showers. In fact, it's Right now, if you listen close, you can probably hear the rain on the roof of my pickup truck. It is steady rain. In fact, I uh, didn't think I'd hear this in Maryland, but we've got folks saying, boy, don't you think it ought to be a little hotter uh, to make these crops finish out right? But uh, So we, we've really been blessed with regular rain. I just heard what Tim Ross is talking about, the upper Midwest and Northwest. It's, it, we, we're very fortunate. Crop looks good. But we'll get into that. I sent in some pictures of corn driving by. These crops are corn 12, 14 foot high. The ears on the edge generally look really good. And for the listeners that can't see the pictures, we're finding uh, a lot of tip back. It's what agronomists and farmers will call tip back. These particular pictures were sent in by Mark Sultanfoosh down at Y Mills, Maryland. And not all fields are like this, but I was talking to him last week, so he sent some pictures that that's the eastern shore of Maryland. And he said, Ben, that's a field that was 10, 12 foot high, looked great until you got out into it. And pollination, a lot, if any varieties were trying to pollinate in uh, Harford County, that July 5th through the 15th, uh, you might want to walk out in your fields before you sell a whole lot more corn. Uh, it's not quite as dynamic as it appears to be driving down the road. Well, it looks all too familiar, Ben, uh, having grown corn for many, many years out in the Central Plains region there. That either A, indicates extremely high heat, or B, uh, a lack of uh, subsoil moisture at the same time, or both. I uh, didn't realize it got that hot there on the East Coast. Well, it, it, that's what's puzzling. You know, we, we only had that period for about 10 days. And I can remember uh, driving into work one day, and it was hot, you know, at daybreak. And I'm thinking, golly, look at all the corn starting to tassel. Well, I'm sure we'll get rain in the next 10 days. Well, we didn't. Uh, and, and then what that – but then it started raining after that. So, again, it's only a, a narrow period. Uh, if you plant it earlier or plant it or cast it a little bit later than that, crops look exceptional. So it's, it's another good reason why you shouldn't pick one variety or one maturity or even two and plant them on your farm because it, if you happen to choose or it happened to tassel in that entire period, then uh, you're hopefully not going to see the quite what Mark sent us, those pictures, but uh, that that's real life. They weren't out of the... They weren't off the internet. They were out of fields <laughs> that uh, he was in last week. Ben, if you don't mind, uh, I would like to hold you through the break here for just a moment. I know you wanted to talk about your uh, tobacco in that area. I need to pause for a quick little break, but we're talking with Ben Hushen of The Mill in Whitehall, Maryland. And uh, Ben, I, I uh, want to get a quick update from you, if you don't mind, on the tobacco crop, and then we'll jump into our futures trade and get everybody updated there. We're talking with Ben Hushen. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. We're talking with Ben Hushen of The Mill in Whitehall, Maryland. And uh, Ben, thanks for uh, hanging with us through the break. I appreciate that. I did want to visit with you. Uh, you were mentioning earlier uh, about the tobacco crop in your area. And if you could quickly, uh, quickly here on the show, just recap how the tobacco is doing right now. Yes, Marlon. Uh, tobacco, primarily York and Lancaster County, which is part of our area. The tobacco crop has been very good. Uh, the the majority of the tobacco in our area is used for cigars, and the uh, crop looks really good, as you can see in those pictures. Some of it's starting to be cut. But, of course, as in agriculture, we're always worried about something. That's all air-dried tobacco. 
And I just mentioned to you, we're getting rain two, three days a week for the past month. So uh, as good as the crop looks, they're going to have a little bit of a challenge keeping mold out of it this winter. That's one thing about tobacco. It sure does have a lot of lush vegetation. And, uh, boy, that is some lush uh, crops the way it looks right there. Thanks for uh, sharing the photos. Appreciate that, Ben. Good stuff. Ben Hushen is with the mill in Whitehall, Maryland. And, uh, of course, we love to get the updates on the mid-Atlantic crops as they occur throughout the growing season. So thank you, Ben. We'll talk to you next week. I want to get you updated on all of our futures. Trade will start with the grain markets here, and then we'll run through the livestock as well on the corn market right now. Boy, pressure continuing. December new crop corn down five and three quarters at 370 and a half. We're still just a tick from our low of the day. They're ticked upward a little bit. Um, let's look at the soybean trade. How is it faring right now? Well, we have new crop November currently down seven at 931 and a quarter. Now it has come off of its low here by about uh, three and a half cents, but still fairly sharply lower on the day. If you look at the wheat trade right now in Chicago wheat, we have September down seven and three quarters, 433 and a quarter. That's off of our high from overnight by seven cents. And if you look at Kansas City wheat on September, we're now trading at 428 and three quarters. That is down eight. And in the Minneapolis wheat trade, well, we have September down 11 and three quarters at 658 and a quarter. So we're in double digit loss territory once again here. Now looking at the cotton trade, of course, on the cotton, uh, that USDA report didn't do it any favors last week. We've been selling off ever since, the way it seems. Uh, December down 41 points now at 67.34 per pound. Jumping over to the livestock trade, let's get you updated there. On the live cattle board, we're mixed. Nearby August is down 70. We're at 108.35. And you have that October contract now up 25.